So I guess I'm going to explore why do I support um, a total departure from capitalist enterprise. I'm not against commerce. I'm not against trade. Um, but land is in the greatest, you know, what, how land has been manipulated through history is one of the greatest controversies we've ever known in human society. And that's obvious. And who owns the land and who controls the proper the land is always been that's ancient that's older than that's that's feudalism that's mercantilism now, capitalism is when capital is more than just land factors of production are land and capital I've seen in my own society with my own eyes how the distribution of land and capital can hurt people can actually cause them to live a less healthy life, can actually cause them to turn on each other criminalistically, can actually cause, you know, a middle class of people to fear the lower class of people because they have to live so close together. And I've seen the rich be insulated from the problems of all society, and I've seen all society have to reorganize and reorchestrate itself simply to serve the interests of the rich and their client government. The client government is the federal government. The federal government has done a great, you know, the United States can support so many people through our social welfare state. We support them. But at what cost? You know, it's imp our imperialism. All the whispering of the CIA into the ear of every sovereign nation on the globe, you know, and that's a good, that's the good scenario. It just whispers in the ear, do as we say, otherwise you will suffer some economic issues, national security issues. You know, we haven't played nice, but no one knows my country's history. Uh, but then the, the concept of aggression. We open open aggression against other countries. Inferior wealth. They have inferior wealth to our own. But for our own strategic interests and for the interests of our allied patron elites in other countries, we will we we we, we create a hegemony. This world order that the United States presides over, all of the socialism we have, comes from. That hegemony. So the Soviet Union is not very different than we are. I mean, in many ways, our social welfare system was, is superior. It's superior to what the Chinese have. It's superior to what the Soviet Union had. That's why people will ask me, well, if you, you've lived so well under capitalism, why would you, why do you seek to destroy it? Because I am not the only person who lives in my fucking country. 320 million people live in my country, and they don't all have equal rights. We have equal opportunity, but we don't have equality of outcomes. Statism, everyone is anti-statist. Americans are pretty anti-statist, and all of these business lackeys are anti-statist, pro-market people. You know, markets can't be trusted. They're not always stable. Maybe maybe this finance capitalism would work better if we had less greedy people controlling it. But, and I don't like to get into the argument of how natural greed is for human beings. But they'll, you know, it's a common argument. Um, the counter-revolutionary argument that in a socialist society... Um, you have hoarding, and you have corruption, and you have greed, all the same. And it's true that the record of socialist societies, to wit, always have an urbanized bourgeois class emerge, people with political connections, and they develop expensive tastes, they betray the revolution, and it's a cycle. It's a cycle that they always, this always has happened. But... 
I looked at some World Bank statistics and the socialist and post-socialist economies don't succeed in distributing wealth very equally throughout their societies. Maybe, you know, the best, best case scenario for a, a socialist society after nationalization, transferring of factors of production, etc., are, is, is that they become ruled by a corporatist upper middle class. It's not, it's not perfect. I'm actually, I'm a, I'm an, I'm an egalitarianist. I believe in radical egalitarianism. I believe that the old should not, shouldn't control the young so viciously. I, I really, I could say I believe in the philosophies of uh, Chen Du Xu and a, a socialist society will pay um, the doctor and the teacher more than the laborer and the garbage man. And, and it, it, it's true, it, it, they will have that. If, you know, trade unions, it's a society run by unions, run by the trade unions. Union membership is mandatory. Wages are compulsory. Uh, nationalization is believed the reward for everything. Their economy is heavily voucherized. People don't realize that that causes a very strong currency because the, cur and it, 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 the currency is not circulated throughout the masses in a socialist society. Um, these structural issues aren't well known to anybody. Capitalists, socialists, Americans, non-Americans, business people, urban planners, lay people. Only I really know most of these issues. So I can argue the structural flaws of socialism better than my, better than my um, detractors and my opponents. So I have to modify my stance, modify my arguments. Um, and this, this, I thought this would be an impressionistic conversation, but I'm not, I'm not going that route. So, yeah, that's one, that's one thing.